This is the Horse Radio Network. This is episode 59 of the Dressage Radio Show on the Horse Radio Network. We would like to thank our sponsors, Kentucky Performance Products. They offer supplements designed to give you the most value for your dollars. Visit them at kppusa.com. show plan for this week's includes our young rider theme which continues here with a featured rider mary catherine nominson plus we have a new call-in segment with a listener this week is megan heda my trainer has this kind of rule in the barn it's called the 10 minute rule and if you have a bad ride you have 10 minutes to sulk and if you have a good ride you have 10 minutes to glow and there's one exception if you fall off in the judges you get 20 minutes to sulk this is chris stafford in lexington kentucky and i'm mary lordson in harvard massachusetts and you're listening to the Dressage Radio Show. Well, hi, Mary. How are you? Are you managing to stay cool up there in Massachusetts? <laughs> I'm certainly trying to. It is incredibly warm up here on the uh, East Coast in New England. It's just, it's, we're having a major heat wave. Now, are you used to that, or is, is it unusual for this time of year? I know we're in the height of summer here, July. Yeah, it's a bit unusual. I mean, it, I think it broke almost 100 degrees today, um, so it's definitely unusual, but it's supposed to cool down within the next week or so, which I'm really looking forward to. It's just, I'm not a heat sort of person, so <laughs> it'll be nice once it does cool down. Now, are you a morning person or an evening person? <laughs> do you get up early and ride, or do you wait till a cooler afternoon to ride? I am most definitely an evening person. I am a night owl for sure. Um, so mornings, I definitely do all my horse work later in the afternoon um, rather than waking up before the break of dawn. <laughs> okay. Oh, well, you two, you, you and I would never get along then. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm uh, definitely a lark and you're definitely an owl by the sounds of things. Yes. <laughs> well, I know it's a challenge to keep cool and keep the horses cool at this time mm -hmm. of the year. You know, we've got all sorts of tricks up our sleeves and the way we can keep them cool and and presumably you're riding in an arena most of the time, are you? And so you're on pretty even footing, Mary. Yes, yes, but we are lucky because our arena is uh, surrounded by really tall uh, pine trees, so we do get some shade, and I usually take the horses out on the trails afterwards to cool down. Well, we've got a great show again. We've got another young rider segment, as I just mentioned, which I'm looking forward to. You, you found a new, a new young rider. You manage to find these every time. Now, who have you found this week? This week, I found Mary Catherine Nominson, and uh, I tracked her down after looking at the USEF national rankings. Um, she was, a few weeks ago, leading the nation for the junior, FBI junior level. Um, she has dropped down to second place as of right now, but it's, it's very tight for both young riders and the juniors right now for the USEF standings. Um, but still, it's an incredible feat for her to be up there um, on the national rankings, and she was a lovely person to speak with. Well, terrific. Well, we look forward to that conversation uh, a little bit later on. Um, but tell us what else you've been doing, Mary. Have you been doing any modeling? I know you, you do all kinds of things. You don't just ride horses, <laughs> do you? No, I don't just ride horses. I, um, I haven't done any modeling recently. Um, I've been trying to take it easy after finishing my last um, Young Rider qualifier two weeks ago. So really these, la these two weeks that um, I've trying to decompress before I start gearing up again for uh, the Young Rider Championships, which is at the end of the month. Um, but yeah, I've just been enjoying time with friends, you know, keeping the horses, working, teaching, training. Um, and I also, this weekend, I have something different that I'm doing. I'm heading up to uh, Linden's um, Dressage Fest Festival, and I'm volunteering for the first time. So I'm very excited to do that. That's Lyndon Gray, of course, a great friend of, uh, of the show here. And uh, we're going to hear a little bit later on from someone who actually, I believe, leases a horse or, or that, that went through the Dressage for Kids program yeah. with Lyndon. So, uh, yeah, and you spent some time with Lyndon. Didn't you train with her? Yes. Over the years, I have worked with Lyndon. Um, I would go to her for a week or two at a time when I was in high school for my winter breaks to be a working student, which was seriously an incredible experience, just how much I learned um, doing that. And um, I see Lyndon very often at the shows and we stay in contact. And um, I'm just looking forward to giving back at her show this weekend after riding in her festival for years myself. So it's, it's going to be a lot of fun 
to uh, be at a show um, as a volunteer for a change. Oh, good for you, seeing how it happens from the other side of the arena, I guess. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> now tell me, you, we're just what, a couple of weeks away before you actually set off for Kentucky for, for the Young Rider Championships, and what will you be doing between now and then? Do you do anything yourself physically to, to train for a bigger competition, Mary, or do you rely on your riding, or, or do you do, do yoga or Pilates or anything like that, any core strengthening exercises? Well, I think my core strengthening exercise would be cleaning stalls and <laughs> taking care of the barn because that's my job here at Cadence Farm. Um, I take care of our horses and I clean all the stalls and do all other. I'll do all of um, the uh, heavy lifting around the farm. So that's really how I stay in shape. And of course, you know, I'd love to make more time to do things such as Pilates or yoga, but it just never can fit it in. So um, I stay fit with my riding and just barn work every day. <laughs> well, I totally understand that. You know, when I was much younger, that's exactly how I got fit. And you yeah. really, when you had so many stalls to clean, you really did get fit. You didn't need to do anything else. And yeah. course, now I've, I've come a long way from that. Now I really have to make the effort. And <laughs> well, I, always, I always joke that I could make my own exercise video, like my daily routine out in the barn, you know, work, <laughs> working the arms, mucking, lifting the buckets for core strength. I mean, it's, it's true. It's a, a workout in itself. It certainly is, absolutely, and in this heat as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, good. So just a couple more weeks then before you head south with your pony. How long does that take you to get down to Kentucky from, um, from where you are in the, on the east, eastern seaboard? Yes, we are giving ourselves, I believe, two days to get down there. I think um, we're, we will probably be trucking down um, a fellow uh, junior rider, rider from Region 8, um, so we might, might be a little bit slower with two horses in the trailer, but, um, yeah, my mom's the type of person that likes to just go and not stop, um, give the horses a little bit of a break, but I think we're going to try to get it done in a day or two. Well, good for you. Well, we'll follow that journey, obviously, and we will catch up with you when you're here as well. And, but we want to continue with our series of young riders. And as you mentioned, you've got a great young rider on the show for us this week, Mary Catherine Nominson. So we're going to hear from her in just a second after we've heard from our friends at Kentucky Performance Products. Well, it's a hot one out there, and the heat wave has hit much of the United States and the rest of the world. Well, don't let dehydration and electrolyte imbalance sideline your horse. Summer Games electrolytes are formulated to replace both the electrolytes and the trace minerals that are lost when your horse sweats. Its concentrated formula allows you to easily feed the correct amount to meet your horse's changing needs. This uh, electrolyte was developed for the equine athletes at the 1996 Olympic Games in Atlanta. We all know that it can get hot in Atlanta. For horses on the go, use Summer Games Electrolyte Plus Paste. Each dose contains a serving of Nalox equine and acid for double the protection against stress. And, of course, you can find all of that at Kentucky Performance Products. They take out the confusion of choosing the right supplement. And you can find them at kppusa.com. That's kppusa.com. Well, I know you had a little bit of problem. <laughs> you want, you've, got an, you've got an explanation here before we bring in Mary <laughs> Catherine. Mary about uh, the sound effects that you uh, you uh, used on in behind you on this interview <laughs> yes i apologize um <laughs> my dog who is suffering from a small heart condition is in the background and here on the early the early stages of our conversation with mary catherine you can hear her um coughing in the background so if you're wondering what that was it's my ill dog um but <laughs> it doesn't it doesn't go through the whole interview so i apologize for that oh uh, what kind of dog do you have we have a little Jack Russell. Her name's Isabel, and she is, I'd say she's a pretty famous horse show dog now. She's been going to horse shows with us for, mm, I'd say, about 10 years now. So she's, she's the horse show dog, and unfortunately, she's getting up there in age, and um, some, you know, she has a heart condition. So. Oh, how old is she now? She is 13. Is she? Well, yeah. well good for her. Well, okay, yeah. well, we, as, as Mary says, we apologize for the background sounds, but uh, I'm sure you'll agree that this interview is worthwhile. So over to you, Mary. All right. So I am here with Mary Catherine Nominson from Houston, Texas. Welcome, Mary Catherine. Hi, thank you for having me. It's great to have you on here. I um, I invited you on the show, namely because I found you um, on the USEF rankings. You're currently ranked number one for the juniors right now for the USEF Nationals. Is that correct? Well, 
Actually, it has moved down. I'm number two now. The final rankings had some adjustments, so I moved down a spot. But Okay. Well, that's, yeah. still, that's still very impressive. <laughs> yes, thank you. So I'm curious to know, um, what was your first encounter with horses? Um, well, I first got into riding, I think I was about seven, and I just went to a summer camp with a lot of my friends, and they had horseback riding there, and that was like, I fell in love, and I thought it was so much fun. And when I came home, I was like, Mom, I have to have riding lessons. So, <laughs> And when she was younger, she had ridden Western. And so she was really encouraging me to get into it, and she was excited about it also. So kind of from then on, I started taking lessons on just little ponies at a local barn. And I kind of was hooked from then. <laughs> yeah, I was going to ask, did you, have you exposed yourself to any Western riding, given your location in the United States? Um, yeah, considering I'm in Texas, most people do assume I ride Western and do barrels and stuff. But um, really, I haven't been. Um, I've trail ridden, I guess, when I go on vacations and stuff. But I really just stuck with dressage. I guess when I was little, it's kind of just plodding around on ponies, if you call that dressage. But <laughs> I really never dabbled in Western or anything else. Uh huh. So then, was the segue pretty easy to competitive dressage? When did you start competing? Yeah, um, I rode the schooling horses probably for three years, probably from seven to when I was about ten. When I was ten, I got kind of my first own show horse, and he was really green. And we started just doing intro and training level, and that's really really when I started being competitive. It's probably when I was about ten years old. Okay, great. That was the same with me. I was about 10 when I started as well. It's a really, it's yeah. such a great age to start. Right. Um, so much so, fun. So can you tell us about your horses that you have now and most, you know, particularly the horse that you're doing the juniors with this year? Yeah. Um, well, the first horse I was just talking about, I got when I was 10. He's an Andalusian. Um, he was really green, only had 30 days under saddle. And so we kind of grew up together, and I definitely learned my basics and got my confidence on him. And then I kind of outgrew him, and my mom rides him for fun on trails. And right now I've had um, my horse Dom for two years. He's a black Canavarian out of Donner Hall. He's 14 and has been trained to pre-St. George, but I'm just doing the juniors with him and riding third and fourth level. But he's been such a great partner for the past few years, and I have got really lucky to find him. Oh, it's so wonderful. So you're doing juniors with him now, and have you, is this your first year doing juniors? Uh, no, I actually did juniors last year for the first time, and I'm going to do it again this coming at the end of July. I'll be in Kentucky, and hopefully next year we'll move on to young riders. Oh, super. Yeah, well, you're, you're very lucky to be doing it at such a young age. You know, you have another, what, two years to do juniors, but like right, you said, you're, al yes, you're yes. Already, going, already going to do the jump into young riders. It's nice to have the choice. <laughs> right, definitely. I, I kind of can take my time, and we'll still see. Maybe if this summer doesn't turn out as planned, I'll still stick with juniors. We're just going to have to kind of see how it plays out. Sure. Now, what do you like most about your horse's personality? Tell us about Dom. Um he's just so sweet. I think if he could, he would probably sit in my lap. Whenever <laughs> I see him, he whinnies and is so sweet. And I think he has a lot of trust in me. I can tell when I'm riding, he gets kind of nervous at shows and in the nervous environment. And so I think he trusts in me a lot. And if I, if I can keep my stuff together and stay confident, he'll really um, do what I say. And I think he's just, he's so, so sweet. He will put his head against you and just wait for you to scratch them all day long. He loves being loved on, so I guess I love that about him. Oh, that's so sweet. Now, um, who is your equestrian idol and why? Um, well, I think there's a lot of really awesome riders out there. I'd love to be the accomplice of them, but maybe Heike Kimmer is my dressage idol. Mm -hmm. I had the opportunity to ride with her in a clinic this past year, and I think She's just very no-nonsense, straight to the point, but she's still generous with her horses, and she's always making sure make sure you reward them and it's clear what you want. And so I think I really respect her as a rider and a person, and I would love to be as elegant and graceful as she is when she rides. I think oh, yeah. She makes everything look so easy. Yeah, oh, she certainly does. She's a beautiful rider. Um, yeah. Now... What is one piece of advice that you would give to other young riders pursuing the sport of dressage? Um, I'd probably say it's a bit unoriginal, but really just keep trying. I think the sport can be so frustrating, 
and there's so many days when I feel like oh, I just kind of want to give up. But my trainer has this kind of rule in the barn. It's called the 10-minute rule. And if you have a bad ride, you have 10 minutes to sulk. And if you have a good ride, you have 10 minutes to gloat. And there's one <laughs> exception. If you fall off in the judges, you get 20 minutes to sulk. So it's kind of just saying you got to move on. You kind of – there's some days that are just so frustrating, and you have to just be able to just forget about it and move on and keep working mm. for that. Hopefully tomorrow will be that – good day where you feel like you got something accomplished or you feel like you kind of broke through something you're struggling with so I think it's just really hard to remember that all this work will eventually lead to something successful yeah oh that's a super piece of advice now is there is there a particular struggle that you have found to be the most difficult you know through your years of riding was there one one area that you struggled with the most or perhaps you're struggling with now um well I just feel like riding it's it's very like long-term reward. You go to ride five, six days a week, and you drive all the way out there, and you don't really see. Yeah, you go to a show and you get a little blue ribbon, you know. Mm. And so, I think it's especially seeing my name at that top of the list. It's such a reward yeah. to see that. So, for me, it's just remembering that this all this work is going to lead to something. I'm not just riding and killing myself and trying to work so hard for nothing. Like, yeah. it's hard to just keep in the back of my mind that it's going to be worth it. All this is going to be worth it and how rewarding it is to be in such a difficult sport and be successful in it. Sure. And certainly the journey itself is always incredibly rewarding too, but I know it can be so frustrating when, you know, you're, you're putting all this time and energy into this sport and the results or the success can sometimes not be very visible at first, but it it certainly does pay off over time, especially when you're working towards the top of your sport. Like you certainly are now, Moving away from horses, um, I'd love to ask you, what is your favorite type of music, and who is um, on your most played list on your iPod? That's a good question. Um, I really like all types of music. I'm not that picky when I drive the barn, put my iPod and shuffle and listen to whatever comes on. Um, I love John Mayer and his music, mm-hmm. but I'm really not that picky. Not really into country, even considering I'm from Texas, but I kind of like everything. Yeah. Um, and then this, this kind of ties into this. You obviously had to create a freestyle for NAJ, uh, y, sorry, NAYRC. Um, so is there, uh, did you use a particular artist for your freestyle that you may like? Um, you know, I actually didn't. I had Karen Robinson, really awesome, playing together freestyles, and she helped me and helped me pick all my music. And we didn't really go for a specific type of music that I liked. It was kind of just what fit Dom really well and what was kind of dramatic and hopefully fit his presence. But I didn't really choose a music that I personally like would like to listen to. Uh-huh. Hopefully something that will catch the judge's eye. Sure. Now, how about um, interests outside of horses? I assume, what year are you in high school? Excuse me? What year are you in high school? Oh, um, I'm going to be a junior next year. So I still have two more years of high school, but um, interests outside of horses, um, you know, it takes a lot of time, so, but I enjoy, I have tons of great friends. I have so much fun just hanging out with them and going to the lake, especially being so hot in Texas. It's really good to get in the water. I love wakeboarding and being on the mm-hmm. lake or in the pool. So yeah. I like to do outside of riding. That's super. And, and now do you have any career plans? Are, are horses what you're pursuing for the rest of your life, do you think, or is there another calling out there? Yeah, um, you know, I'm only going to be a junior, so I still kind of have a few years to hopefully figure out what I'm going to do, but I'm not planning on making riding a career. I enjoy it so much, and it's definitely a passion of mine, but I hope to go to college and get a good job and an education. That definitely comes first in my family, so um, hopefully I'll be able to get a job and be able to support riding as a hobby for the rest of my life. Mm-hmm. As of right now, I don't plan on being a trainer, becoming a professional, hopefully just really enjoying the sport and enjoying spending time with my horses. Yeah. Well, how about your family? Are they involved in the sport? Um, I know you mentioned your mother rides as well. Right. My mom enjoys riding. She's not competitive. She just has a lot of fun. She loves animals like I do and has a lot of fun just spending time with them and trail riding. But she doesn't really show and um, neither really just the rest of my family, and my, but, I mean, they're awesome support group. My dad is always there organizing all the show stuff, getting travel plans. He's mm. so supportive of me and so my brothers. 
but um, my mom and I are the only ones who really have the interest in the horses and riding part. Okay. Well, we all know how important it is to have a support system behind you. You really can't yeah, you can't do well without it. It's it's incredibly important. Um, now, could you just mention what your local GMO is, and perhaps if you're involved with your GMO in your region? Yeah, I'm a part of the Houston Dressage Society, mm -hmm. and um, they have a junior board there, and I'm actually vice president of the junior board. So oh, super. Yeah, we help plan out um, different activities to get the juniors involved and help raise money for education days and clinics, and we have a meeting at least once a month and try to get together and like we did a pack sale, the last show, and we're just trying to get all the juniors involved in the organization and really get more young people riding and experiencing dressage. Sure, and do you find that there are a lot of young riders in your region? I mean, do, did you have a pretty competitive year for juniors and young riders? Um, yeah, they're definitely, I feel like it's increasing more. I feel like when I was younger, maybe I just wasn't really paying attention, but I didn't seem like there were that many young people. But now I think a lot more of the youth is getting involved and there was a, I think there's at least 10 people trying for, or maybe it was like seven trying for juniors this year. There's definitely some competition, and everyone was striving for those four spots, and we're lucky to have two full teams this year, junior and young riders in my region. So there's great. definitely a lot of people working towards it. That's great. It's, it's definitely nice to have a lot of other young riders out there with you. It makes it so much more fun, too, when you can share the experience with yeah, others. Yeah, definitely. I've met a lot of great friends at shows, and have a lot of, it's good having people outside of school and stuff you get to see it shows and really bond with sure and now you said you were 16 years old that's correct right yes i'm 16. okay great well mary catherine thank you so much for coming on the show that's all for today and right. um thank you it was really great having you and good luck at the uscf nationals and of course at the north american junior young rider championships and i I really look forward to seeing you down there. Hopefully we can meet in person. Yes, definitely. Thank you so much for having me. Of course. Well, again, our thanks to Mary Catherine Nominson. Um, just a delight to hear from her and obviously very, very enthusiastic. Um, you know, and, you know, it just never ceases to amaze me how much enthusiasm there is from these young riders in dressage and, and that's, that they start so early on to mm. Mary. Do, do you remember when you first actually got the bug for dressage? Not when you started riding, but when you first realized that eh, dress, this dressage is for me. <laughs> hmm, that's a really, that's a tough question only because I've been involved with it since I can't even remember a time that I wasn't involved with dressage. It's been with me my entire life from the very beginning. So, um, but I think I, you know, after a couple years of competition and just the seeking the thrill of it and um, you know having success and, and just enjoying horse show weekends, I think that's when I knew and I and I'm pretty sure, certain now that it's for me. It's dressage all the way. Well, we're good for you. Well, I know you've got another fan uh, who's going to call, call in in just a second uh, with our new segment called It's Your Call, and we're inviting you to call in. As I said to you in the past few weeks, uh, now I've been reminding you all, this is your opportunity as listeners around the world, and we have uh, listeners now in 42 countries. Feel free to call in. If you have a question for us here on the show, we would love to have you on. You just uh, need to send me your e an email with your question and a take time number uh, that we can reach you on and we will include you in the recording of the show here and our first uh, listener it, it comes from east lansing michigan and she's going to join us in just a second so, but, but before we get to her we're going to hear from glenn the geek glenn the geek here and we get many emails every week from people who really like the shows and they ask how they can help support the horse radio network well, you already do that by listening to the shows and by buying from all of our fantastic sponsors. And now you can add to that by supporting us directly and very easily. The next time you need something from Amazon, just go to any of our websites and click on the Amazon banner in the middle of the page. Then go on and buy your Amazon items. It won't cost you a penny more, just an extra click. But Amazon gives us a little bit back just because you clicked on the banner. Tell your family and friends to do the same thing. Every little bit helps us to keep giving you the quality equestrian programming that you have come to love. Thanks for listening. Well, as I said, our, our new segment called It's Your Call is for the listeners. It is for you to call in. And as I said, our first 
listener is uh, a young Megan Heder. She's just 17 years old. She's from East Lansing, Michigan. And she, as I mentioned earlier, has a Hanoverian horse that she leases, a horse called Simpatico, um, from the Dressage for Kids, which is a, a group that was founded by Lyndon Gray and, as, as we mentioned earlier, Mary, someone, uh, uh, and, and a horse that you know. Didn't you say you, uh, this horse you've actually sat, sat on yourself? I believe so. One of the many horses that I sat on when being a working student at Glen Eden Dressage. <clears throat> so I've definitely seen Simpatico in the flesh, and it was very funny to hear that Megan actually has this horse in her hands today. It's, it's really mm -hmm. cool. Terrific. Well, let's get Megan on the line. And our first caller this week on the It's Your Call segment is Megan. Megan Heater from uh, East Lansing, Michigan, 17 years old, and leases a horse from uh, Dressage for Kids. Megan, welcome to the show. Thank you. Great to have you on. And uh, I, I, we noted when we were talking to you earlier about this Dressage for Kids uh, that Lendon Gray started. That's just a fantastic uh, uh, organization that which you get to lease a, a, a Hanoverian horse to do your dressage on that can't, can't be much better than that can it no I'm I'm really blessed um, to know Lendon and to be, have the opportunity to lease a horse from D4K that's absolutely wonderful how long have you been doing dressage um, I started riding when I was six and started training in dressage um, more specifically when I was nine, and so that would be eight years now. Well, <laughs> that's a young start. That's absolutely terrific. We love to hear that, don't we, Mary? Yeah, it's great. <laughs> I love that. Well, I believe you have a couple of questions for uh, Mary, Megan, so go ahead. Thank you very much. Well, Mary, congratulations, of course, on qualifying for the North American Junior Young Rider Championships. Thank um, you. My first question for you you're welcome. Um, is what was the biggest obstacle for you and your horse in getting qualified for an AJYRC? Well, I have to say that I've been working with my horse from the very beginning since he was a very green four-year-old. So the entire thing has definitely been a struggle making our way up to the um, young rider pre-St. George level. Um, but I uh, over the last six years, when I started doing, when I went into the FEI levels, I first started with juniors and went into young riders. Um, I have to say, my first, my first test as a junior in the FEI class was one of the most intimidating experiences that I've, that I've come across so far. Um, it was a really big jump going from second level to the FEI level, and um, really, it's it's. It's been it's been tough, and uh, I'd have to say that the the biggest struggle was familiarizing myself with the tests. You know, first it was with the junior tests, and then of course two years ago when I started doing young riders, I had to re-familiarize myself with riding those tests. Um, and it's really just the confidence building um, of going out there and competing in the classes. Um, so I'd have to say that that was that has been the most challenging obstacle for me and my horse. Wow, yeah, that, that really that really is the challenge. The FEI tests are much more more intricate and difficult than the average USES test. Yeah. Um, my other question for you is what are you most looking forward to um, in the next couple of weekends here um, when you go to NAJYRC, considering that that is pretty much the premier show um, for young people in North America? Well, I am just, I am so, so excited to just go there and represent my region to my best ability. And this being my first time ever competing at the North American Young Rider Championships, I'm, I think I'm just going to be, you know, completely consumed by the entire experience itself. Seeing all these young riders, that's probably one of the biggest things that I'm looking forward to is, is really seeing the talent, you know, everyone together in one place that one week and um, seeing, seeing our nation's best young riders and feeling so um, blessed to have been able to get to this point where I can actually compete amongst all these other young riders. So, I, you know, of course, the competition itself is going to be so exciting. I hope that my horse will be well behaved. You know, that can be the most difficult thing with my horse is a spooky, spooky uh, situation can sometimes be our downfall. So, you know, fingers crossed he'll be well behaved and I'm looking forward to riding my test the best I can, but also just connecting with other young riders and seeing what the United States um, and Canada and of course the other um, countries that may be re represented there um, have to offer. 
Well, congratulations. You've obviously worked really, really hard to make it this far. So have fun and good luck. Thank you so much, Megan. And thanks again for calling in. It's great to have you be our first caller for this new segment on the show. Oh, thank you. I'm so honored to have been able to do it. Well, I wanted to uh, thank you again, Megan. Uh, as Mary said, it's terrific having you uh, call in. We really appreciate it. And wish you the very best of luck with your season here as the summer unfolds. And uh, hopefully get to see you in Kentucky, too. Yeah, well, that, that is a goal of mine in the future. So thank you very, very much. Just keep working for it, Megan. I'm sure you'll get there. <laughs> thank you. Thanks again for your call. Well, uh, thanks again for Megan uh, to jump to Megan for joining us here, and uh, don't forget to send me an email, Chris at horseradionetwork dot com, and you can be included in this new segment called "It's Your Call." Well, we've just got. Uh, uh, I, I think this is just an obvious fit for you here. Your tip of the week, uh, Mary. Only you could have come up with this idea uh, <laughs> as the <laughs> grey horse, and it is a perfectly fitting for this time of the year. And I think you've got to share, going to share some really valuable advice here on sun protection for gray horses. Sure. Yeah. So my tip of the week is <clears throat> sun protection for gray horses. Um, having a gray horse can be a challenging experience on a multitude of levels, whether it's simply keeping them clean on an everyday basis or finding them covered in manure stains on the day of a show. They are simply not easy keepers, um, though there is one area that is sometimes overlooked, um, and that is sun protection for your gray horse. Uh, because, of horse because of their coloring and fair skin, grays are more prone to skin damage and even skin cancer due to the strong UV rays put off by the sun. So one simple step you can take to protect your horse while in turnout is to blanket them in a light fly sheet, especially during the summer months when the sun is at its strongest. Um, and having a gray horse myself, I uh, blanket Rosignol in a light blue Rambo fly sheet every day before I turn him out. And um, the particular model that I have not only covers his body, but also the top half of his tail and his neck, which are good areas to keep covered as they're just as sensitive as the rest of his body. Um, and so, and another thing to go that extra mile to protect your horse is to apply sunscreen to their noses. You wanna be sure that it's safe to use on animals. And since horses, and well, especially grays, um, tend to have a very sensitive pink nose, it's um, another thing that you should keep in mind um, when putting your horse out to turn out or even riding them under the strong sun. So go ahead and blanket your horse in a light fly sheet and put on that, that sunscreen and let them enjoy the summer days. Great advice, Mary. And I, I'm guessing that you apply sunscreen too, do you, when you're riding? I do, yes. I think it's just as important that um, the riders are aware of that as well because, the, you know, an hour goes by and suddenly you've been under that sun for quite some time. So, And, and not least of all, the reflection off the sand if you're in a sand arena. That's right. It's like riding on the beach. <laughs> yeah, really. Absolutely. Well, thanks for that, Mary. Uh, well, I've got another question here from, from a Facebook uh, comment uh, that was <coughs> left by Brendan Ellums. I'm not sure where you're calling or you're from, Brendan, but uh, you posted a, a comment for us that you need some advice on uh, dark blue or black coat for lower level dressage. And mm -hmm. she said she loves all our shows, which we love to hear, Brenda. Thank you very much for that note. Um, so this is a question for you, Mary. What, what, is it a preference thing or, or is there a regulation as to which uh, coat, color coat you wear for the lower levels of dressage? Well, to my knowledge, there isn't an actual regulation whether it has to be blue or black, depending on the level. But um, I really think it's a personal preference, uh, whether you want to go with black, which will obviously um, match your, your riding boots, um, or if you want to go with a blue jacket. And I think either look great um, for your show attire. Um, one thing to keep in mind, though, uh, and I know Brenda asked specifically about lower level dressage, um, which you could, of course, ride in a top hat at lower level dressage. But um, if you are competing in a top hat, um, you should have your top hat uh, match your coat as well. So I just think it's a nice touch to have a navy blue jacket and a navy blue top hat or black top hat, black jacket. Um, but either way, I really think it's a personal preference and my personal preference is dark blue. I just think it's, it's very pretty. It's a little different than just the regular black. Well, there you have it, Brenda. Um, the choice is, is yours, but um, I, I, th I prefer blue too. I, yeah. I Maybe it just looks a little bit more feminine, Noah. But uh, sure. Anyway, there's 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 your advice, and and we also have 
another uh, question or comment on our Facebook page from Tony Venhouse. Tony is someone I know. She's the wife of Franz Venhouse, who used to be uh, the CEO of the Australian Equestrian Federation. And hmm. Tony is very involved with the dressage community and organizer of the national championships. And she left a couple of comments on our Facebook page uh, and sent me a message actually um, because she really enjoyed the interview, of course, with Hayley Beresford that we did recently. Of course, an Australian rider that's based in Europe. And uh, she also uh, asked uh, if we could include um, the new judging system of having seven judges, she thinks would be a good idea to include that on the show in the mm. future and some talks with the uh, leading judges. She, she likes to hear about the developmental issues within the sport. Uh, I quite appreciate that. So, uh, Tony, uh, nice to hear from you. Thank you so much for sending those messages and your suggestions for shows. We always love to hear from you. And maybe we can get you on the show as well because you're so involved with the sport in Australia. We would love to hear from you. So uh, there's a shout-out for Tony. Say hi to uh, Franz for us, and uh, I know we'll see him here for the World Equestrian Games. But, uh, you know, there's so many areas uh, of the sport that we can cover, Mary. You know, we hope that we've catered also to the young rider element through your wonderful interviews here uh, through the summer <clears throat> and leading up, of course, to the North America Junior Young Rider Championships, which take place at the end of the month. And we are going to catch up with you there next to, to uh, do some interviews with you. We'll make that show very much a youth theme um, <laughs> at, the end, at the end of the month, and that will pretty much wrap up our young rider series here on the Dressage Radio Social. We're always looking for new ideas, new segments, so if you have any ideas, don't be, don't be afraid to send those over to me, chris at horseradionetwork.com. And for those of you who may be coming over to the Horse Park for the North America Junior Young Rider Championships at the end of July, don't forget to uh, save yourself a, a, some time to go over and visit the Gift of the Desert at the International Museum of the Horse. It is the most fabulous exhibition. I think I've mentioned it on the show almost every week now. It, um, I don't want you to forget when you get here and you want to get it out of the heat <laughs> for an hour or so, <laughs> go into that fabulous museum and take a look at that wonderful exhibition celebrating the Arabian horse. It is truly fabulous and very educational too, Mary. And uh, Maybe I'll meet you over there when you're not riding and we'll just take a wander around there in the shade. How's that? Yeah, that oh, sounds perfect. I would love that. <laughs> Terrific. Well, we're coming up to the end of the show and it's always fun to have you here, Mary, and really appreciate your, your interviews, your contribution, your tips, of course, as well. Well, it's always so much fun. I love it. I love coming on here, and it's especially meaningful to me to have the um, youth segment on the on the show. It really means a lot. Of course, absolutely. Well, don't forget to, that if you have any suggestions for the show, any questions or comments, you can always write to us at chris at horseradionetwork.com, or if you prefer, leave a voicemail for me at 270 you can always check out our show notes on our pay, on our website, of course, that's dressageradio.com, or go to our Facebook fan page and catch up with us there and leave your comments. And uh, don't forget to follow us on Twitter, Horse Radio, Chris E. Stafford, and, of course, Mary Dressage. We're all on Twitter. And uh, Mary, <laughs> of course, has a, has a page on, on Facebook as well and a blog and a website, and we'll put links to, the, to all of those on our, on our show notes here too. I want to thank our sponsors, as always, for making this show possible, our crew. And I want you to uh, check out our other shows here. You know, we, Mary, we hear from a lot of listeners here at the Horse Radio Network who actually listen to a number of the different shows, you know. Oh, so, yeah. And that's interesting because I would have thought, you know, if they were interested in dressage, that may be the only show they listen to or, or eventing or jumping or the Western or, or, or the Horse Tips Daily. But that it seems that a lot of our listeners do listen to a number of our shows, so we're delighted to hear that. Yeah, that's super to know that our listeners are well-rounded equestrians. Absolutely. I have to say, even though I'm a part of the dressage radio shows, sometimes I find myself just tuning into the dressage radio show, so I, I need to expand my horizons as well. Though I do, <laughs> I do want to know more about jumping, so I, I'm going to start listening to more of the jumping shows. Well, there you go. We have some great uh, advice, too, on the jumping radio show, and I wanted to mention that because I'm starting a new segment on that this week, uh, and I'm going to call the TIC journalism, and you'll have to listen to the show to understand what I mean by TIC mm -hmm. journalism. So check that out, jumpingradio.com. My uh, co-host there is Jessica Jahail, and uh, we'll all, we always have something fun to talk about. Last week, um, I had a, an exclusive conversation with Anne Kaczynski that uh, 
has uh, received a, a lot of praise and a lot of people have enjoyed that. They've clicked uh, on that a number of times and listened to that and downloaded it. So check out uh, that exclusive interview with Anne Kaczynski. And, uh, and also tune in this week to find out a little bit more about what I'm telling you about this TIC journalism. You may wonder what that is. Aren't you, you know, curious, Mary? Don't, yes. Don't make you <laughs> I'm very intrigued. <laughs> All right. Well, check it. Check out jumpingradio.com later this week. Well, that about wraps it up, Mary. Thanks again so much for joining us. Good luck in your final uh, weeks of preparation for the North America Junior Young Rider Championships. I very much look forward to meeting you and your horse. Yes. And same here. I can't wait. And uh, I'll be back in the meantime. I'll be back here at the same time, the same place, and next week. So until then. Thanks for listening, everyone. And remember to practice safe riding by always wearing your helmet.